Thanks for your time. Pleasure. So, firstly, you've obviously had a lot of success in the sports media industry, but when was it whilst growing up that you thought this was the career you wanted to pursue? I always wanted to be involved in sports, and uh, in 1989, I was in year nine. I was playing a lot of tennis and a lot of football at the same time. I had an opportunity to go and play tennis overseas. I was going to have one year off school and see if I could make it on the satellite circuit. In the second last football game, I blew up my knee. Had uh, a knee reconstruction, didn't go well. Had another knee reconstruction, ended up having nine knee ops. I thought, if I can't play sport, I want to be involved in sports. I always wanted to be either managing athletes, managing sporting events, or talking about athletes. So it was so. Sort of Sort of at that point, I think, when I was 13, that I decided uh, if I couldn't play it, I wanted to be involved in some way. And as far as gaining experience within the industry, how did you end up where you are today? With the commentary side of things, I was growing up, I used to, um, at the local polo cross and polo club, Dad was involved. We grew up as a farming family and we used to stock horses on the weekends to um, muck around and, and do things. And one day the commentator, wasn't there. And my father, who was in charge of setting up the club, said, well, if you can find someone else, get them to do it. If not, you commentate today. So I started commentating. I enjoyed it. I did it the next weekend, the next weekend. And one thing leads to another. And about uh, eight years later, I ended up being asked to go and commentate in England. And then I did that for three or four summers, and that all worked very well. And a guy from Channel 7 said, I know you've been commentating in England, would you like to try and do some stuff here in Australia? He gave me an opportunity to do a pilot. His name was Lewis Martin. I did a couple of pilots and they took a big risk on me and for that I'm very grateful. So you do a lot of broadcasting and live television. Do you get nervous or feel the pressure having to come up with content on the spot? If you're prepared, you don't get uh, anxious. I think there's always a sense of excitement, which is slightly different from anxiousness. I was very nervous during the Olympic Games this year, a few reasons. One, there wasn't anyone to bounce off. I was, it was a very different environment, so it was just me, and I felt a lot of pressure being just me. The other thing with the Olympic Games is there's 28 sports, 41 disciplines, 10,500 athletes. It's very easy when you're talking about the football on the weekend when there's 18 teams, you know the players, you've called a few of the games. So the answer to that is I get excited and I get uh, nervous without being too anxious. So along with that uh, being in the media comes a lot of criticism. Do you mm -hmm. take note of any comments that people make about your work? Depends who makes the comments. If it's someone from the network that says this is what we thought you did badly, then that's one thing. If it's uh, a colleague that says we notice you're doing this, why don't you do this? But there is so much anger from people you've never heard of like if you did take notice of all of that, you would never go back in front of the camera. So yeah, I'm not, for that reason, I don't, I'm not on social media just because I'm too weak to be able to cop the barrage and go back out again. I find, yeah, I find it amazing that some of my colleagues are and I'll check things during the game. Like, I just couldn't do that. So the answer is I do take on board criticism because it's right and you, you know, it's, ideally it's constructive. But do I listen to the flat out abuse that comes in such an unproductive way? I try not to. And you're predominantly known for your role with Channel 7, but how much do you enjoy writing for Herald Sun? I love it actually. I, um, I do interviews on the Sunday. I love meeting new people and the Herald Sun has given me a really broad Brief. They said basically, whoever you want to interview, interview them. And it can be two or four pages. And the more interesting people I've found are the people that you've probably never heard of. You know, we've done some really interesting pieces with famous people, but the people that I've got a lot of thrill out of is the doctor that saved my daughter's life, the IVF specialist that created my daughter, uh, soldiers who represent Australia and you know, put their lives at risk every time that you've not heard of, but they deserve to be in the pages. So you're obviously a much less controversial uh, journalist to an extent. So is your preferred style the interviewing or is there another type of writing that you really enjoy? I love interviewing because I like soliciting responses and in 
engaging with someone. So it suits me. The other thing is that you'll very rarely hear me have an opinion because I'm not an expert. So what I feel my role is when I'm on air is to get the experts to give their opinions. So, you know, I just wouldn't get any joy in playing the antagonistic role of journalists, which, you know, there are, and that's their role. I, I, to your point earlier about the anger, and those that criticise, like I just have no joy out of criticising people. There's a Theodore Roosevelt quote that um, talks about the credit belongs to the man in the arena whose face is marred with sweat and blood, not the guy who's criticising the guy in the arena. Very easy to criticise, very difficult to be the guy that's actually doing the doing. So I prefer to be describing things, asking questions, than I would be criticising those that are doing the doing. So you said you've really enjoyed interviewing a wide range of people. Are there some celebrities or star athletes that you really think will stick with you forever? Greg Norman was really interesting. We very um, we spoke for probably an hour and a half, and only 10 minutes was probably on golf. He was, he's got a great depth to him, and he's very confident. Without being, in my view, arrogant, he's very confident, which I enjoy. Um, Wayne Gretzky, ice hockey player out of a Canadian living in America now, was really interesting. Um, who else have I really enjoyed? Susie O'Neill, who is unbelievably humble, I really enjoyed uh, talking with. Um, and all for different reasons. Some because when I went in I didn't know them and they surprised me how easily they allowed the conversation to flow, and others because of the insight they gave you. Um, Jimmy Bartell, who, you know, in Victoria, he's a big name, Brownlow medalist, Norm Smith medalist, three-time premiership player, but he spoke about his father and his mother and their domestic violence issues, and that, I'll always remember that, for very different reasons, you know. For him to trust me, to open up to me, to give me his, um, you know, to be so, open and raw, you know, I really value that. And as well as doing a lot of work in the footy season, you're involved with uh, Spring Carnival and Australian Open. Is there a particular sport that you like working with the most? I don't think there's a particular sport. I think there's particular moments I love within the sport. So the racing, for example, when the gates open to start the Melbourne Cup, there is a roar that goes around Flemington, which I think is very guttural and very Australian and very uh, special. The silence on Anzac Day, when you're out in the middle of the ground and you're helping with the ceremony, that 60 seconds of silence, I think is the best sound in Australian sport. When the men walk up uh, for the first point of the Australian Open men's tennis final, the umpire calls play, there's complete silence you think that a major is about to be decided. They're the sort of moments I love. So it's not so much the sport as the moment. The time that Isaac Smith is kicking after the siren to win a final, or Sam Lloyd to win Friday night, uh, Saturday night footy or two. And there's these moments within the sports that, they're the moments you dream about as a kid. So to be there and be a part of them, it's like ridiculous. And do you think for you the versatility in your knowledge is what's helped you get to where you are today? I think uh, because I'm not pigeonholed as an ex-footballer or an ex-tennis player or an ex-rower, it allows Seven to use me across all sports and allows me to talk about all sports. And again, it's because I don't, I think, have an opinion that I'm soliciting opinion so I can, whether I'm, they want to put me in charge of the bushfires or politics or whatever, I still play the same role. I'm the guy that asks Ben Gibson about, or Pat Rafter, or Jimmy Bartell. Or. So it's a hosting and calling role, and regardless of the sports, I feel comfortable. If you do the work, you can do a good job. And now you touched on your experience in Rio for the Olympics. There was a fair bit of negative talk about Rio as a whole. How did you find that experience? There's a lot of negative talk about everything in the world. So, uh, it depends on what you look at 
uh, you know, when you talk about the Rio games, the, the athletic performances from Bolt, Katie Ledecky, Simone Biles, the Brazilian soccer team, yeah, there's Olympic chapters that have been written. The negativity, I think you're probably referring to, surrounds drugs, uh, as well as poor crowds. Brazil is in an economic recession. It is going through all sorts of troubles. So the fact that Brazil even got the games going was significant. Um, I am a bit of a sceptic in terms of performance enhancing drugs. My view would be they are more prevalent than most people would think they are. So it saddens me that yeah, half of the Russian athletics team is out. Um, there's pos positive tests around yeah. in all fields. So I don't know how you combat it, but I still think there is something great about the Olympics and what the Olympics does for certain people, for certain countries. For certain, what the Brazilian soccer side winning did for Brazil as a country I think is significant at a time when it needs it. And having a refugee Olympic team compete and giving a flag for those refugees to compete behind I think is significant. To have the world come together for the opening ceremony and make a statement around peace when there's so much unrest I think is important. So you can get on Twitter, Facebook, whatever you want to do and make in 140 characters plenty of noise and say how um, it's all terrible or you can look at the positives. Now it's relatively common knowledge that your brother's the CEO of the AFL. How often do people come up and ask you about his decisions? Uh, every Sunday before game day we have a open forum when we're waiting for the show to start saying ask the brother. People ask me to pass stuff on to Gil. Um, how often? Each week somebody's saying something. Yeah, and it's a really tricky position now. The CEO of the AFL, the Prime Minister, they are such scrutinised positions. Whatever decision you make is instantly critiqued. So imagine that in your own role. But whatever decision you make, every day is critiqued. So it's exhausting. So, and it, but it is great. And in, in, in the AFL fascinates so many people, they want to have a, a view. But uh, the answer to your question is often. Uh, the other thing that happens is they confuse us. Yeah. People ask Gillen about broadcasting, they'll ask me about it. A guy came up to me at the airport the other day, I was getting out of a taxi to catch a flight. He came up to me, started talking, talking about the scheduling and the fixture and what was going on. We went through security, we got through to boarding the plane and I said, are you jumping on the plane? He said, oh no, 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 I was just picking someone up. I to... So he walked through for 25 minutes talking Thinking I was guilt, I was just, I didn't want to sort of let it down. And so you've achieved just about everything there is to achieve in the industry. No. Do you still have goals for the future? Yeah, of course. Um, I want to make less mistakes. I want to um, you know, do everything better. I want to, um, you know, I, I want to do whatever it is that is considered to be the best in broadcasting because if you can do that it means you've done well enough to get that so whether that's hosting a Brownlow or um, calling the Olympic Games or calling the Australian Open Tennis Final you know, at the moment I'm hosting those things and you know, I'm very privileged and lucky to do so but you're always wanting to do more and I think you're always wanting to do things better yeah, this interview, I wish I'd answered some questions better. Hopefully in five years I do. You know, everything is always, how do I make myself better? Um, in regard to Australian sport, uh, I'd love to host the Commonwealth Games in 18, which is in the Gold Coast. Um, yeah, I'd love to host another Olympics. I've never hosted a Winter Olympics. Um, I've never call, called a gold medal event, because you're hosting. There's always things you want to do. You'd like to die saying, yeah, Called, um, called a gold medal event in the Olympics, I think. 
And finally, last year you said to me that uh, Melbourne are no good getting a new footy team. Do you stand by that comment? I stand corrected. <laughs> I think uh, Simon Goodwin is going to do a great job with the Demons. I think he's already done a great job. He and Paul Roos work really well together. I'll be wrong on this number, but there's been, I think, 40 odd changes in three years to the list. There'd be another seven, eight or nine this trading period. And I think the people you've brought in are really good, talented footballers. The culture is completely different to three years ago. I think we'll play finals within the next two years. I hope 17. I'm sure by 18 you will be. Um, there is a slight problem for all teams that are building at the moment in the form of the Giants. But uh, of all the teams that finished outside of the eight, Melbourne and Essendon, I think next year, will be the two that improve. Essendon for obvious reasons. But I think you guys won 10, 11, 10. You're looking, trying to go 12, 10 and sneak in the finals and lost the last time. I'd be disappointed if it wasn't a 12, 10 or 13, 9 season, wouldn't you? Absolutely. So what are you going to do from here? What's your life look like? Personally? Yeah. Hopefully yours. <laughs> Is that what the job you like? Absolutely. So would you rather commentate or would you rather host? Uh, probably host. Would you? Yeah. And that means across all sports? Yeah. Number one sport? Footy and then public cricket. Okay. So you've got a problem in the footy's on seven. Yeah. Cricket's on nine, ten. Fox, which would you prefer to do? Pay TV and do uh, footy and cricket over there, or free to air and do footy? Go to footy. Okay. If you said your favourite three hosts in Australian sport are, and you can't use me because I don't want you to not include me, I don't want you to include me, go. Oh, go like Basil Zemplis. Mm -hmm. uh, in the cricket, Mark Nicholas. And Bruce McMahon. Okay. What do you like about Baz? Oh, I think he's very knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he showed that similar to you in the Olympics. And the fact that he's gotten to where he is without having to have a sporting background. Yeah. Because we're not all great at footy. That's right. <laughs> Bruce? Uh, his knowledge is unbelievable, reels off the facts, and he's just great at everything else. Passion? Yeah. He's got it. And Mark Nicholas? I think he's very professional. Yeah. Well, he does it. So he's a great example. Mark Nicholas gets. I'm sure plenty of tweeters abusing him for these ridiculous reasons. I think he's a magnificent host. His language is excellent, his knowledge is great. It's like, how can you criticise the guy? But apparently he uses too many adjectives. Now, you're getting um, abused for being too well uh, versed in adjectives, then I think you've got to ignore the criticism. Absolutely. Hey, thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. Pleasure, man. Good to see you.